Hello, I'm Suzanne Donovan. Uh, today I'm joined by Rachel Heideck. We're going to be discussing organizing around health and safety in the context of the current COVID-19 pandemic and ways to make positive change in your workplace for you and your coworkers. Since we're talking about organizing around workplace safety and health, it's important to understand that under federal law, it is the employer's responsibility to provide a safe and healthful workplace. This became law with the passage of the OSHA Act in 1970. It's important to remember that workers don't only have to rely on their employer's choices to improve working conditions. Workers can make demands and organize for change in ways that are legally protected. However, we need to understand how to use those rights. There are three legally protected methods to fight for safer workplaces. One is to organize a union. Another is the OSHA right to refuse unsafe work. And the third is protected concerted activity. And we'll discuss each of them in turn. Under Section 7 of the National Labor Relations Act, workers are legally entitled to organize a union. Um, Section 7 says that employees shall have the right to self-organization, to form, join, or bargain collectively through representation of their own choosing, and to engage in other concerted activities for the purpose of collective bargaining. Organizing a union can yield important long-term benefits to current and future workers. However, as a method to make immediate change, it's less likely to keep workers safe during this pandemic. Some of the pros and cons around organizing a union as a method for change during the current pandemic are that it can affect all aspects of work and the results are legally bonded. However, it is difficult to achieve and it can take a long time. OSHA's right to refuse dangerous work allows workers to refuse work that can expose workers to serious injury or death. In order to claim protection under this rule, the worker must meet all four of the following conditions. Where possible, ask the employer to eliminate the danger and if the employer fails to do so, and you refuse to work in good faith. This means that you genuinely believe that an imminent danger exists and that a reasonable, per reasonable person would agree that there is a real danger of death or serious injury and that there isn't enough time due to the urgency of the hazard to get it corrected through regular enforcement channels, such as requesting an OSHA inspection. However, as far as we know, the OSHA right to refuse has not been used successfully during the pandemic. Next slide. Um, finally, we have protected concerted activity. Concerted activity is when two or more coworkers come together to talk about or advocate for changes in their workplace. It can include reporting unsafe working conditions or violations of law to state or federal government. Even if one employee acting alone, even if one employee is acting alone, they can still be participating in concerted activity if their activity is done for the benefit of all of their coworkers. Some examples of protected activity include, sorry, can I start my section over? Is that allowed? Will we be able to split it? Okay. Finally, we have protected concerted activity. Concerted activity is when two or more coworkers come together to talk about and or advocate for changes in their workplace. It can include reporting unsafe working conditions or violations of law to state or federal government. Even if one employee is acting alone, they can still be participating in concerted activity if their activity is done for the benefit of all of their coworkers. Next slide. Some examples of protected concerted activity are talking to your coworkers about your wages, benefits, or working conditions, protesting, striking, circulating a petition for asking for better hours. It can also mean a group refusal to work in unsafe conditions or openly talking about your pay and benefits in the workplace. Uh, joining together with coworkers, even on social media, to talk directly to your employer, to the government, or the media about problems in your workplace. It can include talking about your pay or pay concerns with your coworkers, walking off the job with coworkers to protest an unsafe policy and telling reporters about your protest, or refusing to divulge the names of workers who signed a petition protesting management. 
However, it's important to note that not all work-related activity is considered protected concerted activity. Some examples of things that wouldn't qualify include complaining to your boss, acting only to help yourself, acting when your coworkers have refused to do so, emotional outbursts that disturb the workplace, using social media to insult your boss, or abusive behavior towards supervisors or coworkers like swearing or violence. During this pandemic, protected concerted activity has been the most effective way to organize around health and safety conditions in the workplace. There have been hundreds of actions around the country demanding changes to the workplace and other practices to address issues around COVID-19. If you follow the rules of protective concerted activity when you're carrying it out, it is illegal for your employer to take action against you. This means that your boss can't demote, terminate, or fire you for participating in protected concerted activity. They also can't arbitrarily change your work schedule, cut your pay or benefits, or deny you overtime or promotion. Harassing, intimidating, threatening, or unfairly disciplining you are also uh, illegal for your employer to do in response to protected concerted activity. And it is also illegal to for them to prevent you from communicating with your coworkers about your concerns. Next slide. If your employer does retaliate against you for talking about workplace issues or taking action at work, you can file a complaint with the NLRB at nlrb.gov and click on find your regional office. You can also contact us at the Wincosh Workers Center at 716-206-3550. So if you want to improve the conditions of your workplace during COVID-19, and always, uh, here are some initial steps that you can take. You can talk to your coworkers about improving these working conditions and concerns. You can discuss concrete changes to improve the workplace. Another good step is to evaluate resources, including organizational assets, customers, clientele, community partners, media, and employer-employee relations. Developing a concrete Developing concrete goals that would lead to the changes you want is also a good step, as well as developing a plan, including tactics and methods to achieve those goals. If you have questions about any of the things that we've discussed in this video, or would like to start organizing in your workplace, you can contact us at 716-206-3550, um, which is our hotline and is available in 14 languages. You can also contact us via email at inquiry at wincosh.org. Um, and we're happy to answer any questions you have about your workplace and your rights.